Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you on this gorgeous fall day, I guess late summer day, that uh, where Vermont is showing its most beautiful self. Whoever you are, wherever you come from, wherever you're worshiping this morning, know you're also very warmly welcome in this time and these places. Uh, I want to look for a moment at the poem that I put in our word for contemplation. One of the themes of our service this morning is memory, and um, we'll be talking about memorizing scripture a little bit later, but I found this poem this week that I just love. Uh, Renata Suzuki is a pen name for an anonymous poet. This is from a collection of poems called Longest Night, published in 2018. And the poem is this. Your memory feels like home to me, so whenever my mind wanders, it always finds its way back to you. Sometimes we lose our way home. Sometimes home seems so far away. Sometimes we forget home altogether. So this morning, as a way of centering ourselves in worship, I'll invite you to just close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that. And just think for a moment of a memory, a person, a place, in place a time, an experience, where you just felt home, where you felt like you were where you needed to be, where you felt safe and cared for and loved. Just take a moment to bring that memory to mind.
that memory feels like home to me. So whenever my mind wanders, it always finds its way back to you. Welcome to Sherlock Congregational Church. And welcome to this time of peacemaking, peace practicing, peace remembering. As we light the candle of peace, and we pray for peace, and we work for peace, and we sing for peace. I invite you to stand in spirit or body as you're able. As we pray our prayer of confession and Lord's Prayer, saying time passes, memories fade, God, we're always forgetting our way home. Forgive us our forgetfulness and guide us back to you, like gulls following bread trails on the beach. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And leave of us our trust, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, it's good to get rid of what we don't need. It's good to acknowledge the, the places where we're broken and breaking, to free up new space for new life and new love. God always meets us in that space, offers us forgiveness upon forgiveness upon forgiveness. Rejoice always. We are all forgiven. Amen. Our uh, opening uh, hymn this morning is number 316, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. Have some fun with it. It's a fun hymn.
Well, friends, today is World Communion Sunday. It's a tradition that's been going on in the church since, I think, the 1930s or 40s. started in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, as a matter of fact. And uh, the idea is to acknowledge uh, that we are here celebrating communion together in this local church, but there are churches all over the world who are doing exactly this today and this week and certainly every year. So we, uh, the table's big and wide and deep. It's connected. It's, 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 it's about more than just us here today. And so we take some time to think about our worldwide connections, the places and ways that were similar to those other uh, folks gathering around communion tables just like this, followers of Christ. The ways were similar. The ways were different. So living into all of that, looking for points of connection, looking as our... Um, United Church of Christ mission statement tells us that we may all be one, partnering together, working together to so love more and more into this world. So with that, I'll say this. Jesus, this is your worldwide table. It stretches from horizon to horizon, from the bottom of the ocean to the atmosphere-thin sky, from continent to continent, culture to culture, language to language, cuisine to cuisine, At your worldwide table, we gather to celebrate who you are. Not one of exclusion, but of inclusion. Not narrow, but wide. Not provincial, but universal. Not demanding conformity, but demanding diversity. Not the Christ of the center, but of the edges. We celebrate you at your worldwide table, even as you celebrate us calling us beautiful, beloved, wanted, welcomed, graced, and good, calling us good, calling us good. We celebrate you at your worldwide table, and you celebrate us, offering us the food and drink of love, broken bread, crushed grapes, and saying, come, all of you, not because you must, but because you may, here finding healing and wholeness for your journey. Let us pray. Holy God, our loving creator, close to us is breathing and distant as the farthest star. We thank you for all that you have made in this beautiful creation. We thank you for all who have given themselves to your will through the generations of people, and especially from G- for Jesus Christ, whom you sent from your own being as our savior. In gratitude and humility, we come before you today, committing ourselves to prayerful, compassionate, and courageous action in the world. So come, Holy Spirit, come, bless this bread and bless the fruit of the vine. Bless bless all of us in our eating and drinking at this table that our eyes might be opened and we might recognize the risen Christ in each other, in our midst, and in all of creation. Amen. So we remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you, these grains, this water, This life is for you. In the same way also after supper, Jesus took the cup. And he blessed it and he poured it. And he gave it to them. Saying, take and drink all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this as you often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Dear ones, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come for all things are ready. To be as inclusive as possible, know that the, all of the bread this morning is gluten-free and the cup contains grape juice. A uh, couple of other notes. The, uh, the, the earthenware platters that we have today in observation of World Communion Sunday are lovely and beautiful and much heavier than the aluminum ones we usually use. So just be careful and mindful of that as as they come around to you. 
Uh, when the bread gets passed to you, we invite you to refrain from eating until all of us have been served to show our unity in Christ. And uh, when the bre- a cup comes, you can drink as a sign of your personal devotion whenever you choose. So ministering to you now in Christ's name, we give you this bread. Take and eat. We give you this cup.
Let us pray. Loving Christ, from your worldwide table, you send us to be even wider, even broader, even more colorful, even richer in every way. It's a joy as we leave to say thank you to one such as you. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. you. Children and youth, you're welcome to go to Sunday school. Anybody else want to go? <laughs> so this is our time for prayers this morning. I want to raise one um, which many of you have read already, but there is a hole in our sanctuary this morning, and it is because Linda Reynolds is not with us. But on Wednesday evening, um, the choir gathered around her outside with Will, her son, and her brother. And they had planned to sing three songs to her. I think it was three, and they sang the songs. And when they sang the song that we all sing at the close of worship, May the Blessings of God Rest Upon You, and they came to the final words, now and forevermore. She drew her last breath, and she flew, I think, exactly the way she wanted, lifted up on the wings of glory, light as a feather, and humming and singing to her heart's content. So we mourn her passing. We give great gratitude for all the beauty that she has given to all of us. And we give great thanks and offer prayers for Hadley Bunting this morning and for the Abernathy family and the Bunting family because this afternoon is Hadley's ordination and we are all so proud of her and excited for this church and for the wider church. Um, And prayers for Dave Perrin, who is currently at Respite House, and for John Levine, who's a resident of Charlotte, who died this past Thursday. Prayers for his wife, Susan, who taught primary school grades at CCS for decades. And prayers for Doris Reether's soul as she ascends to heaven. Doris is Kimberly Price's mother, and she died in Florida on Friday with Kimberly with her. So are there other prayers that you would like to raise? Kevin. Uh, I'd like to pray for uh, the family of Lissa. Lissa, we prayed for her last week, and she died at the respite house this, uh, this, this past week. So prayers for Lissa and for her family. Um, Lissa died this past week at the respite house as well. Yes, Sam. So prayers for Charlotte. Um, um, Amber Alert went out this morning, and it looks as though she is a nine-year-old girl and is in great danger right now. Anyone else? Yes, Trina. So prayers of celebration that... um, 
Sandy Riggs is going to be celebrating a birthday on Thursday, and it has an 8 and an O in it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. Jackie Brisson. So uh, prayers for Jackie Brisson, who is facing a very scary form of cancer. It is somehow in her thymus, and they can't get to it without cracking her rib cage and going in behind her heart to find it out. So great prayers for her. Yes, Nat. So prayers for uh, Karen Kennedy and for his father. Her, her, her daughter, Alexandria. They were part of this congregation for um, some time years ago. And uh, Karen's son died maybe a couple. Okay, he died a couple of years ago in uh, his memorial services this afternoon. So let us pray. Dear God, September was blissfully dry and warm with clear skies and starry nights, a marked relief from a summer of rain. We reveled in short sleeve shirts and creamies and kayaks and cookouts. Lucky we have been, and that is all. Neither blessed nor more deserving, just lucky. We stayed north of the rain, ahead of the frost, bathing still in fresh tomatoes and corn on the cob, another batch of pesto, everything somehow more delicious because it's extra, free, beyond expectation, a bonus at a time of year when aging plants like aging people shrink. We love getting something for nothing. It makes us giddy and happy. Gracious God, help us, we pray, to understand that this joy at the reception of bounty can sometimes harm others. Certainly it is right and good to delight in days of beauty, but our hunger for more bears careful watching. Help us as we give thanks for abundance to remember those who have so little, whether as a result of hurricanes and storms, a changing climate of war, of dictatorships or repression, unjust policies or misguided politics. Much of the world weeps as we wipe the butter from our chins. And as we do not deserve the extra, so they are not undeserving. Help us, we pray, to find ways to share our harvest of education, money, good fortune, and love. Lead us to set a table where all are welcome, to gather about us those whose hearts pine for protection, whose plates rattle empty from lack of food or friends, from lack of love, whose souls are weighted down. And today, as we bless Hadley into full ministry, may she go forth never letting go of your hand. Amen. Yes. Donna Newhall's Laro. Laro.
Okay, so Lara is dying or dead, so we pray for Donna Newhall. Thank you. Laro. Thank you. Friends, it's good that we continue our prayer time, we continue our worship with a time to consider our offering, our gifts to this congregation. Uh, it's, um, it's amazing to me at all this congregation is doing, the vitality, the life, the, 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 the projects that we're partnering with in various organizations. It's all possible because of you, the way that you give your time and your energy, and of course your money as well. So if you are moved today, uh, you can um, put a check or... Uh, cash into our collection plates on the way out. You can also give electronically through our website, or there's a QR code in your bulletin if you do that kind of thing. And just thank you, thank you, thank you for who you are and all you give to this congregation. With that, friends, let's pray. Loving God, you call us and you send us. You equip us with talents, with wisdom, with resources to give and say, go, Give and give and give. And we do. So we dedicate our offering today to you. We dedicate ourselves to you, trusting that it will become love upon love upon love. Amen. I'm going to invite the choir up now at this time. And if you remember back to a few weeks ago for Homecoming Sunday, we did sort of a sing along anthem. And I got a lot of positive feedback about that. So we're going to do this again, which seems fitting for uh, Worldwide Communion Sunday, because one of the other ways that we're in communion with one another is through music. <laughs> so this song has three parts. I'm going to sing the first part, and then we're going to sing through it three more times to teach it to you. Then I'll sing the second part. We'll do that one three more times. Then the third, that one three more times. And then, whichever one you still have left in your head, I invite you to sing, and we're going to put them all together.
Good morning, everybody. In chapter 2, verses 5 through 11 of Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, we hear what is sometimes referred to as the Christ hymn. Let us listen together. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. May God bless this reading and our hearing. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself to the point of death, even death on the cross. That passage was given to me as part of a seminary preaching class a lifetime ago, and the idea was that each student was given a a particular passage, and we were to memorize that, to recite it in a practice sermon the following week. And uh, I think the idea was to, to get us to practice memorizing parts of our sermons so we could get our eyes off the paper and looking out into the congregation. But whatever the reasoning behind it was, it just felt like torture to me. I, uh, I, I hadn't trusted my memory very often, and I was worried. I'd worried I'd forget a line or a word. I'd worried I'd lose my place. I worried that I would just embarrass myself in front of my peers but it was the assignment, so I decided to try. But then I realized that the passage I had been given, the first part of our passage today, I didn't like very much. You know, it's got this language of emptying and humbleness and servanthood and being obedient to the point of death. It just felt gloomy to me. It felt uh, fire and brimstone, and quite frankly, it repelled me. But now, horror of horrors, I had to memorize it. Boy, before I continue with the rest of my story uh, with this passage, we'd better pray. (laughs) (laughs) Loving God, the sun streams in, the blue skies stream in, the wind streams in, and you stream in. And look, you find us sitting here. 
Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Give us your gospel and nothing less. Amen. So, the day after my memorization assignment was given to me, I went home and I opened up the Bible and I began reading the passage over a few times and it was in fact the gloomy fire and brimstone passage that I had remembered it to be. But as I read it over a few times, I found some things there I hadn't seen before, heard before. I realized how poetic it was, how musical, how it just all kind of flowed nicely together. So I was curious and I opened up my resource materials and I learned some things about it I had known before. I learned that that particular passage is scholars refer to as the Christ hymn of Philippians. Some scholars think that Paul wrote it. Some think that Paul borrowed an early Christian hymn that was already circulating at the time. Some scholars think that it was a non-Christian hymn or poem that Paul adapts and edits for use in his, uh, in his letter here. But regardless of the origins of it, in its context, it's very clear, it's very different from the text that comes before and after that. So to get a taste of that and how hymnic and poetic this is and how different it is from the letter, I'm just going to read a little bit. And uh, notice, notice the change, where it changes into the hymn. Paul starts, he says, if there's any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself to the point of death, even death on the cross. Interesting. Curious. And uh, more to learn there, but I, I had to memorize. The deadline was looming, so I put the research aside and I began memorizing this, this uh, passage uh, line by line over a few days. It's not long, but it takes a while to sort of get it into you. And I, over time, I, I did get it into me. It entered my memory, it entered my mind, it emptied my body and became part of the tip of my tongue. And as that all happened, something happened for me and in me and to me started to like it a little bit more. <laughs> I started to not be so repelled by it. I started to, to, uh, to be more and more curious, not about the form, not about the fire and brimstone, but about the wisdom that was there, trying to communicate to me about the truth there, about who God is and who Jesus is and what it means to be a follower of Christ. And so as that all started to work within me, I, I heard this. I heard Paul saying, look, don't be like me. Don't be like Pharaoh. Don't be like emperor. Don't be greedy. Don't be an egoist. Don't be a thief. Don't be a murderer. But let the same mind be in you that was in the one who echinos and hatin who emptied himself, who gave away his power, his position, and his privilege, who became a humble servant and who dedicated his life to transforming the world through love. I hadn't heard it like that before until it was in me. I'd heard it like, like it was a, a list of shoulds. I don't like shoulds. Do you like shoulds? I don't like shoulds. It sounded to me like a glorification of suffering. It sounded to me like a concise list of all the things I had rejected from the church and those kinds of Christians. It felt to me like it was distant, like it was alien, like it was outside of me somehow. But through the process of memorization, it enters my memory, it enters my body, my mind, 
It's under the tip of my tongue. And as it did that, I started to see it with new eyes, that it wasn't about shoulds, it was about coulds. I started to understand this passage. It wasn't a glorification of suffering. It was a frank description of a pathway to freedom and liberation. For the first time, I saw this passage not as a problem to solve, but as a gift given to me to give away to other people. So it was time for my sermon in my class, time to recite my memorized passage. And walking into that class, I was nervous, unsettled, uncertain about my ability to preach because I couldn't. And, but I wasn't, I wasn't worried about memorizing because that passage after a week of that process, it was uh, in me. It was becoming part of me. I realized it was a gift to me and I wanted to give it to my classmates. And I won't lie to you and tell you that it was the best sermon I ever preached in my life and they all gave me a standing ovation because that's not what happened. But I'm pretty sure that I nailed the recitation piece. That was all a long time ago now. And that passage, this passage, is not no longer becoming part of me. It just is part of me. And if if you've been through the new member process here at the church in the last few years, we have this time where we share our faith stories and journeys with one another. And I oftentimes refer to this passage as part of my faith journey that it's become a guiding passage from our life and faith. It's kind of my own personal poetic mission statement, reminding me day to day, moment to moment, breath to breath, to do my best to have the same mind of the one who emptied himself, to try to be one who gives away my power and my position and my privilege, of which I have tons, trying to be the one who humbly serves those around me, who tries to be the one, though I fail and fall and get up and fail and fall and get up again, I try to be one in my life who transforms the world, one interaction, relationship, moment at a time, with the love of Christ. And who would have thought, with a passage that repelled me, that worried me so much, became as much a part of me as my first kiss, as my wedding day, as the births of my children, became as much a part of me as the Easter story. Oh, the end of this sermon, and because this passage has been such a gift to me, given to give away, I want to give it away to you. We read it and read it, and it's there in your Bibles to read anytime you want, but I I invite you to consider memorizing this, moving it into you that it becomes part of you, a gift to your life, guiding you as you go, doing that work of emptying on a daily basis, and then perhaps moving you to give it to others. It's not hard, just open your Bibles. It's towards the back, kind of in the middle of the New Testament. It's online, you can find it on a million different sites. Just moment by moment, day by day, just to recite it, to memorize the lines, to get it into you until it's part of you. You don't have to, it's an invitation. But for those who would like, and for all of us, let's end today by saying that together one more time. Deirdre, if you could project that for us. There it is. If you you wish, you're welcome to say it along. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant and being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He emptied himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. A gift for you and for me and for all of us. 
a gift to be given away. Amen. I you to stand as you were able. We sing together our closing hymn, Send Me Jesus. seated. So to end our uh, worship today, just uh, an invitation for all to join us on the front lawn or the back lawn for uh, the fellowship hour uh, hosted by the Bristos today. Thank you, Marcia and Bob. And uh, just some time to come together and have a little fun. Um, while you're going out there, you'll see on the back bench there is uh, a collection of uh, winter clothing, uh, coats and boots and hats and all that kind of thing. Um, Krista Ranke and our missions team is collecting those again this year, and those will be distributed on October 29th as a, sort of like a, a, a pop-up shop in Burlington for the refugee and immigrant, immigrant community there. So if you have any extra coats, hats, boots, anything warm lying around and you want to bring it in, just put it here on the bench, and Krista will come and scoop that up and make sure it gets to the right place, and we thank you for that. Uh, let's see. Oh, this Tuesday... Uh, so two days from now at 5.30, um, our social justice ministry will be resuming their two, first Tuesday suppers, first Tuesday of the month. It's not really a supper. It's just a chance for people to come together and talk about all the justice and needs in the world and what we might do about them in our lives and in our community. Um, we brew coffee. We have some drinks. There's some food to pass around, but people also bring their own food. It's very informal, just the chance to chat. This came... About a year ago, we started this because people just felt overwhelmed at the state of the world. And we said, let's stop feeling overwhelmed and let's share that. Help us carry that with one another and then mobilize for action. So that was a year or so ago now, and we continue to do that. So come join us. We'd love to have you. This week, I'm going to be talking about um, our denominational general synod, which is held every two years, and that was back in July, and I was a delegate, and um, I'll talk to you about the 14 resolutions that we passed. I won't go into detail on all of those, but I will talk a little bit about the one, the committee that I was on for slavery reparations. There's a lot to talk about there, and we can... No, 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 that's Tuesday at the Social Justice, yeah, so Tuesday. Uh, let's see what else... Um, at 2 o'clock today, in this very spot, for the first time in at least 21 years, Hadley Bunting will be ordained as a minister of the gospel and installed as the associate pastor of families, children, and youth of this congregation. We will have representatives here from the association. The clergy will be here with our regalia. We'll process. There'll be wonderful music. And you are all invited. We would love to have you come and be part of that. Uh, and then there'll be a reception after the service over in the vestry. And if you are unable to come today, please pray for Hadley and her family and our whole congregation on this big day. Uh, let's see. Next Sunday, Susan will be preaching, and we will be joined by the interim jump president, Ann Tewksbury Fry, who will give a, a brief mission moment uh, in, during the children's time. And there's a lot to talk about because Jump has been through a major transition over the last six months, at times having to close their doors completely. 
this is a major resource for providing for our community members uh, here in our area. Though it's all the way in Burlington, it affects us certainly down here in Charlotte and beyond. And so a weakened jump is a weakened everybody. And so Anne is going around and bringing greetings and talking about the exciting work that they're doing and the needs that they have. And so she will come and speak with us there as well. Then after this service, did you hear the news that the East Charlotte Tractor Parade, after a year off, will be happening again right over there? I think there's going to be a little bit of a different route than there has been before, but anyway, all the signs will tell you where to go. If you haven't been over to the East Charlotte Tractor Parade, it's really fun and just so quaint and homey and just a wonderful thing for family and everybody. So that's at... Well, I've been asked to drive the church's tractor. <laughs> well, not the church's tractor, but the gator that leads the parade. Um, and so I may, I may sneak over there. No one, you can come, you can sit, you can drive. That's right. It's really a fun event. Uh, <laughs> Lane's Jeep uh, will be in the parade. They're letting you're not a tractor. They gave you permission. <laughs> Wonderful. Super fun. That's all I have. Other news or announcements today? Jack, I need to give you a microphone, though. There you go. No one can hear. There you go. Uh, we have, I have a link that I can give you if you miss the lecture and want to listen to it. Uh, if you give me your email, I can send, uh, send it out to you. And uh, you can send to me your email to John Stetson, MD, at Gmail. It's very simple. John Stetson, MD, Gmail. And I'll send you the link. Thank you, sir. Well, friends, with that, I invite you to stand and body your spirit as you're able. And receive this blessing. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ who loves you and called you to love others. Go into the world today with that message and that mission. Amen. And let's sing to one another.